This is the subtly refreshed 2021 Honda Accord Hybrid. Let's take an in-depth look at this fuel sipping sedan, go on a little road trip and find out if this is any good. But first, a Honda Accord montage. So can you believe this is the first time I've ever driven a Honda Accord of any generation? Isn't that nuts? These things have been around since 1976, a total of 10 generations. How is it possible that I've never driven one of them? But I guess here we are, it's crazy, but I'm looking forward to experiencing this one. In general, sedans are falling out of favor, crossovers and SUVs are dominating the sales charts, but the Accord soldiers on. And with this new one, we've got some small refinements to an already excellent package. So today I'll be driving several hundred miles all around Southern California to find out what kind of fuel economy we can get in this thing and to determine is the Honda Accord really as good as everybody says it is? I mean, the Accord has only been around for what, 45 years. Is that really enough time for Honda to prove themselves with this vehicle? I'm not so sure. Let's find out if the Accord is actually good. Spoiler alert, it's really good. So this generation of Accord has been around for a few years and what we have here is a slightly refreshed, slightly revised version. Very subtle changes to the front end, especially the grill and the headlights. Higher end trims get these LED headlights. You still got a pretty big schnoz on the front end, which I didn't really like when I first saw this design, but I'm coming around to it. This touring trim gives you 19 inch wheels, lower end trims get 17s, and I think these wheels look pretty nice. And even though this is a sedan, you still have that cool fastback shape. The design looks a bit conservative, but I'm not saying that in a bad way. You know, they want the car to appeal to as many people as possible. So they didn't really try anything over the top here. Overall, this touring trim looks upscale. It looks expensive. What do you think of the Accord design? Let me know in the comments below. So with the Accord, you have three powertrains to choose from. And of course, we've got the hybrid here. So in the hybrid, we get a two liter inline four cylinder making 143 horsepower and an AC motor that makes 181 horsepower and combined it makes 212 horsepower when they're working in unison. Now the lower end trims promise 48 miles per gallon combined, but for some reason this touring trim only offers 43 miles per gallon combined. So if you really wanted higher efficiency, you probably want to opt for the lower end trims. And even with those lower end trims, the efficiency still isn't quite as good as a Camry hybrid or a Sonata hybrid. But the good news is this hybrid powertrain is only $1,600 more expensive than a comparable gas powered Accord. And it provides more power and better efficiency than the 1.5 turbo that you can get with this car. So in terms of the interior, this design has been around for a few years without many changes, and that's for a good reason, because they really got it right when they first designed this thing. The thing I love about it is that it's just familiar. Everything is where it should be. You don't really have to think about the controls or the switches. There's no gimmicks. Everything is really well placed. Honda makes good ergonomics look easy because there's nothing here that's perplexing or requires you to take your eyes off the road for long periods of time. Drive some other cars with AC controls on a screen and come back to the Accord and you'll appreciate this approach every time. You can operate the AC without even looking at it. Speaking of, all trims get dual climate control standard. I'd say the only thing that I didn't really like that much initially was this push button gear selector, but all manufacturers are moving towards kind of non-standard gear selectors. And once you get used to it, it's fine. And it takes up a lot less space than a traditional gear lever. These seats are very cushy, very comfortable. I wish this bottom cushion were a little bit longer for my long legs, but that's really my only complaint here. If you want heated seats, you've got to opt for the EX and above. And if you want heated and ventilated, you've got to go for this touring trim. So with the seat all the way back, I have more than enough legroom. I'm six foot three and it's just very copious amounts of space in here. Tons of headroom, no issues there. And lots of adjustments in the seat, plus two memory locations for this touring package. Pretty traditional sunroof above me, no panoramic option on this car. In terms of the overall design, it looks good. This fake wood trim looks fine. 
I'd say the only thing that kind of looks cheap in this cabin is this sort of prosthetic beige hard plastic trim right down here. This material kind of feels a bit medical grade, like it belongs on a giant MRI machine or something. I bet if this was in black, actually it is black over here on the door, and that looks a lot better than this beige. So I'd probably opt for a different color interior. There's soft touch materials in pretty much all the places that you'll touch, except for where my knee hits the center of the dash right here. There's that prosthetic beige plastic again, and my knee bounces up against that. I don't really appreciate that, but it's a small nitpick in a pretty well-designed cabin. Up front, we've got this eight inch infotainment screen, which used to be an option, but now it's standard. But it does still feel a little bit small. I do appreciate the physical buttons for some functions. The graphics look fine. It actually looks a lot better than the graphics you find on the Camry, which feel like those are from the 1990s. This works well, it's pretty responsive. And you get wireless CarPlay and Android Auto available on the EX and above hybrids. One thing that does feel a bit dated is the rear view camera. The resolution isn't that great and there's no 360 view available. Up front, you've got this kind of strange little door that hides the USB ports and the wireless charger. You get wireless charging on all models except for the base model. A generous amount of space in the center console. The door pocket cup holders are pretty small, but the cup holders here in the center are decently sized. Now the EXL and the touring package give you this 450 watt, 10 speaker sound system. And depending on what kind of music you listen to, it could be either really good or not that great. If you listen to rock or metal, I wouldn't say this is a very good sound system. I just could not dial out enough of the mid-range. But if you listen to R&B or hip hop or anything where you might want to crank up the bass, it's got a really good subwoofer. And for that type of music, it sounds awesome. But if you're a metalhead, you want to listen to some Pantera or Metallica or Deicide, don't get an Accord. I don't think this is a stereo system for you. I wonder what the overlap is between Accord buyers and Deicide listeners. Do you drive an Accord and listen to Deicide? Let me know in the comments below. That is maybe the most random thing I've ever included in a car review. So in front of the steering wheel, we've got a traditional analog speedometer on the right and a digital gauge on the left. The digital gauge isn't particularly pretty or really offer that much configurability, but it does offer you just about everything you would need to see. And this touring trim gives you a pretty nice looking heads up display too. In terms of rear comfort, just a massive, massive amount of legroom in this car. Headroom is just okay though. Taller people will feel a little cramped, especially in the center where my head definitely touches the ceiling. But if you have kids and you need to stuff a couple rear facing car seats in this thing, absolutely no problem. You probably won't even have to move these front seats up at all. USB charging ports are now finally standard on this car. And if you want the luxury of heated rear seats, you'll have to opt for this touring model. In terms of cargo space, it's got the largest trunk in this segment at almost 17 cubic feet of space. You got a couple levers to drop down those back seats, which is nice, but it only sort of releases them. If you want to get them all the way down, you have to sort of climb into the trunk and push them or walk around to the side. Okay, so in terms of acceleration, this thing is pretty quick. Zero to 60 occurs in about six and a half to seven and a half seconds, which is just really good for a large family sedan. And one of the things you'll notice is that off the line, it gives you kind of electric car levels of torque. And that's because the Honda hybrid powertrain is actually pretty unique. The gas motor is set up to generate electricity or to drive the wheels in low load situations. Like if you're on a flat freeway and you're kind of maintaining a constant speed, that's sort of a low load situation where you don't really need a whole lot of power to keep the car moving. But it's quite often the electric motor that's responsible for moving the car and under high loads or heavy throttle, both work together in unison. <laughs> it's pretty quick. Oh, stuff's falling over. My camera's falling down. One thing to keep in mind is that this is a front wheel drive setup only. If you want an Accord hybrid with all wheel drive, can't have it, sorry. If you want to get a Honda hybrid with all wheel drive, you're gonna have to opt for the CRV hybrid. All right, so let's talk about the transmission. Um, I'm being told that this Honda Accord Hybrid does not have a transmission. Yes, that's true. This Honda Accord Hybrid does not have a transmission. You might be surprised to find that out, but no transmission anywhere to be found in this vehicle. So here we've got two electric motors in place of a transmission. The gas engine is connected directly to one of the electric motors and it's used mainly as a generator. There's a clutch pack that works kind of like a torque converter. And then there's a second electric motor which actually drives the wheels. 
It does sound a bit groany and buzzy under heavy throttle, but not nearly as bad as a hybrid with a CBT. So plenty of power for most situations, really plenty of power for pretty much all situations. This thing is quite peppy, as they say. But if you want a little bit more pep, you can dial in sport mode. Press the sport button right here and you get a little bit different throttle mapping. And it kind of makes this thing pretty fun to drive on a windy road. How is that possible that a hybrid sedan that's this big can actually be kind of fun to drive. I don't really get it, but it's true. The steering on this car is just fantastic. I love the steering on the Accord. It's so good. But yeah, it's not a sports car. You can hear my tire squealing at about 40 miles per hour. So there's really no chance of me catching up to the Miata that's just a few turns in front of me. I could try, but I don't think it's gonna happen. But in general, there's a lot of fun here. But of course, if you're buying a hybrid, you're probably far less interested in sport mode and more interested in econ mode. I'm not sure if switching to econ mode will actually result in better fuel economy, but it does change the throttle mapping to encourage you to drive more efficiently. Or drop it into EV mode and cruise on battery power alone, albeit for extremely short distances. In terms of ride, it's really great here. This touring trim gives you active suspension. Those dampers are not adjustable in any way, but certainly improves the ride. So in terms of safety tech, all Accords, even the base models, come with Honda's full suite of safety and driver assistance features. So things like active cruise control, lane keep assist, lane departure warning, all that. The adaptive cruise control works really well, and I'm told that it's a slight improvement over last year's model. Okay, so you're buying a hybrid. What you really care about is fuel economy. Like I mentioned, the lower end trims promise 48 miles per gallon and this Touring promises 43. Now I've been managing between 36 and 38 miles per gallon in mixed driving, which yes, is quite a bit lower than the EPA estimates. I have a pretty good mix of city driving and highway driving, but I will say a fair amount of my driving has been on these winding back roads with a lot of hills over mountains and through canyons. And I just haven't been able to get close to those EPA ratings when I'm including this type of terrain. If your driving habits include more city driving and you don't have quite as much of a lead foot as I do, chances are your efficiency will be probably quite a bit better than mine. So this certainly isn't going to be the most efficient hybrid sedan that you can get, but it might just be the most enjoyable hybrid sedan that you can get. I really enjoy driving this thing. Okay, I think it's time for another montage, the Honda Accord Hybrid Road Trip Montage. All right, so how much does all of this cost you? The base Accord starts at just under 26 grand and the base hybrid starts at 27,585, not that much more than the non-hybrid version. And there's a good list of standard features even on the lower end trims. And this top tier hybrid touring comes in at 37,195 as tested. Okay, so what about the competition? There's really not that many hybrid sedans even left. So what even competes with this thing? You could look at the Camry Hybrid, which is more efficient, but it is a little bit more expensive. Or you could look at the Hyundai Sonata Hybrid, which is a bit slower, but I'd say the interior is probably a bit nicer. With crossovers and SUVs dominating the sales charts, one has to wonder, are sedans becoming a relic of the past? The Ford Fusion is gone, the Chevy Malibu is gone, but like the 45 years and nine generations of Accords before it, this latest one continues to just do everything really well and oftentimes better than comparably priced crossovers. And this Accord hybrid model, which significantly dials up the efficiency, only adds to the allure. Throw in the EV-like acceleration, spacious and comfortable interior, great ergonomics, excellent handling and elegant styling, this family sedan can almost do no wrong. Yes, it's not exactly the most efficient hybrid you can buy. I was never quite able to get the rated fuel economy out of this thing, even after hundreds of miles of driving. But the overall experience of this vehicle more than makes up for those nitpicks. The Accord in all of its 10 generations has pretty much always been a smart purchase. 
chances are you won't go wrong with an Accord. Yeah, the changes on this latest one are very subtle, but they all work together to improve on an already fantastic car. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more like it, please consider subscribing and hitting that bell icon so you can get notified of all my new car reviews, used car reviews, and updates on my fleet of weird and mostly broken 80s and 90s vehicles. If you want to help support the show so I can make more videos like this, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash hello road. For as little as $2 a month, you can get early access to my videos and more, or purchase a hello road t-shirt at hello road.tv slash shop. You can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Mr. Ethan Tufts. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're well, and I'll see you soon.